Hi guys, it's Trevor, and this is Discovering Gay History. I told you it was coming. Barbara Giddings is our queen of the day. Let's do it. So Barbara Giddings was born in 1932, and she really joined the gay rights movement in, in the 1950s. So in 1958, Barbara joined the Daughters of Belitis, which is a West Coast um, lesbian group, and they wanted her to open a New York chapter. The Daughters of Belitis was a group that often worked with the Madison Society, which was a larger, considered more successful gay rights activism group. And uh, together, they would co-sponsor um, lectures and events for other gay people to join. So Barbara met her partner Kay at a Daughters of Belitis event. Barbara was the president and founder of the New York chapter. And so they met at a picnic. So in the 1960s, Barbara joined Frank Camney in DC um, to organize the pickets. Frank, as you might remember, was fired for being gay and Barbara helped him organize these pickets in front of the Pentagon and the UN and things like that. So one of the things Barbara did as the uh, leader of Daughters of the Leaders is that she was the editor of the nationally distributed magazine called The Ladder. You might remember in the first episode that Edith was a contributor to that magazine. Something that Kay and Barbara felt about the Daughters of Belitis is that they were really limiting and they sort of scolded their members. They wanted to assimilate. They wanted their members to be normal members of society and not disrupt the heterosexuals. Um, and Kay and Barbara had a big issue with that. What they wanted to do was disrupt. From 1965 to 1969, Frank Camney and Barbara Giddings led something called the Annual Reminder. So in Philadelphia at Independence Hall on July 4th, they would pick it every year. That was later replaced by the Gay Pride Parade in New York City and along the East Coast. Okay, so this is my favorite part. In 1971, Barbara was a member of the American Library Association and she was the first person to create a gay caucus uh, at their annual convention. And she staffed at the at the caucus um, a hug, a homosexual booth, a, a kissing booth, and they had a women's only line and a men's only line, and it was like a ghost town up in that bitch. Nobody was coming. So what she did is her and Isabel Miller, uh, another member of the organization, kissed on camera on national television in 1971. Amazing. And it was shown all over the place. And in 1972, Barbara and Frank organized a discussion panel that eventually got the conversation rolling to have homosexuality removed as a, as a mental disorder in the psychiatric manual. So what they did at this discussion is they got a gay psychiatrist to testify and present his learnings about homosexuality and its natural occurrence, but he was afraid that he was going to lose his job. So what they did is they put him in a disguise. He looks like fucking Leatherface. It's a little bit scary. And they called him Dr. H Anonymous. Sounds like a James Bond movie. But as a result, in 1973, homosexuality was removed from the diagnostic statistical manner as a mental disorder. In 2007, Barbara died from breast cancer and is survived by her partner, Kay. They were together for 46 years. In 2019, Barbara was added to the National Wall of Honor at the Stonewall Memorial. That is the life and activism of Barbara Giddings. We'll see you tomorrow.